Jeff, would you, uh, would you come forward? Uh, I, I want to thank the board and the church for letting me go on last week as I shared at the installation service of, of my friend as he was taking on a new uh, lead pastor position at his, uh, his church. is called Happy Corner Church of the Brethren. And uh, he's beginning there, and, and he invited me to come and speak at his installation service. And uh, it was a great time to be with that church because it's a church that uh, has a longer history than us, but they're at this place where they really want to uh, do some of the ministries that are very similar to what we're doing uh, in their community. And so it was exciting. Uh, to be there with them and to share in that weekend. Um, and so thank you for giving me that time away. Um, Jennifer did a wonderful job speaking as we celebrated our VBS from the previous week. Um, and then as we prepared for this week, uh, Jeff and I had been talking just uh, about the journey that he's taken this year with God. And, uh, and uh, as, as we talked about that, I thought, man, Anniversary Sunday would be a great, great day to hear that story. And so uh, he and I have been talking and he's shared with, uh, shared with me his story and uh, let me just say you're, you're in for a special treat to hear what Jeff has uh, to share with what God has given him. So let me give you a prayer and uh, then we'll listen to the word that God has given you. All right. Would you join me, please? Heavenly Father, thank you for, um, for how you work and the mysteries of life and all the unknowns that are out there, uh, your plan that starts with love and continues and faith and hope. You guide us and direct us in the way that you would have Oh, and as we continue to look for you, you shape us. And so, God, as we hear the story of how you shaped Jeff throughout his life, God, may our hearts and our minds and our ears be open so that we may see the ways that you are trying to shape us in our life. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm so happy uh, to have the opportunity to uh, chat with you today. Uh, and I uh, do realize uh, what's before us as soon as we're done with the uh, pig. Uh, so I'll try to be as uh, quick as I can, but uh, it might take just a little while. Again, I'm awfully uh, happy to uh, be here uh, to deliver the message today about uh, my faith walk, uh, the humble beginnings of where I was, uh, and uh, as I stand before you today. Uh, and um, everyone has their story, of course. And I feel uh, very fortunate to be uh, able to share my story uh, with you. Um, I never thought I'd be standing before a church body, uh, my congregation, to deliver a message. Uh, it's, uh, it's easy, though. Uh, I had uh, typical butterflies this morning uh, before uh, actually being able to stand up here. Uh, I had uh, some very nervous apprehension uh, precisely one year ago. Uh, as I was uh, batting around uh, whether I was ready to uh, go through the believer's baptism or not. Uh, I was really going back and forth on that. Uh, but today, to be able to stand before you to uh, uh, chat about uh, my story, uh, it's coming very, very, very easy. Um, and basically, it's my love for each and every one of you, uh, and for God, and uh, for Jesus. Uh, this will be part uh, confessional. Uh, part testimonial, um, really a recounting of uh, my observations of the first year committed to Jesus Christ. Before I get started, though, um, how special is it to see uh, Pastor Al here today? Uh, as uh, we were beginning a faith walk uh, a little over two and a half years ago, Al, you were right there for, the, uh, for my baby steps. Uh, so uh, to see you uh, here today, uh, to hear me, is a, a, a just uh, I'm honored. Um, but I also want to talk about what Faith Community Church uh, means to me, uh, especially here on our anniversary day. Uh, there was a day, and you'll hear in detail in just a moment, where church really didn't matter all that much to me. It wasn't on the top of my priority list. Um, but uh, now that I've been a member here for about two and a half years, I can't miss a Sunday. Uh, if I'm in town, I have to be here. Uh, of course, there's a vacation, there's a trip every once in a while, uh, the Indy 500. Uh, so, uh, the, yeah, we'll, we'll miss that day. But if I'm in town, I'll, I'll be here. That's the power and draw of faith. Uh, and I've never seen anybody have a bad day here. Uh, sure, there's been bad things shared, uh, but that's when the hugging starts. Uh, and uh, like I said, I've never seen anybody have a bad day. Uh, and not to mention the prayers as well. And uh, those are prayers that you will feel uh, from uh, the brethren. I've never seen such a tight-knit group of uh, caring and uh, loving individuals. 
uh, from all walks of life uh, coming together for a common purpose. This house is full of worshipers who care deeply about Jesus, God, and each other. Uh, this church is uh, full of prayer, uh, laughs, smiles, life, and mostly love. Uh, my son and I are very happy uh, to call Faith home. Now, about this past year, um, uh, my life has been like a, a Disney movie, if you will. And you know the drill. You know, think of, uh, say, The Lion King. Uh, that movie starts with a lot of uh, festiveness, a lot of happiness, uh, a lot of parades, a lot of singing, a lot of dancing. Um, and then about halfway through, uh, there's a pitfall, or in, uh, followed by tragedy, uh, followed by an uplifting lesson. Uh, and that cycle loosely mirrors my life. There's been good, uh, there's been bad, there's been trap doors, uh, there's been uh, sadness, and there's been happiness. Uh, yet as I stand before you today, I'm in good stead, and I owe it all to the decision of a year ago uh, to let go uh, and to follow Jesus. I took that commitment last August during the Believer's Baptism our church does every summer. It was one of the best decisions I ever made. As most of you know, it was filmed out there at the lake. Um, Patrick asked me to say a few words before the baptism. Uh, and I watched that recently. Um, and there's a moment of uh, slight hesitation before I began speaking. And today I can see the exact point. Uh, that was my point of no return. Uh, I had to go forward now. And, uh, you know, why was I apprehensive uh, in, in the first place? Uh, not sure of what was to come, uh, stage fright, uh, that I would have to live my life so differently immediately afterwards? Uh, what if I made a mistake in my new uh, Christian ways and means? Uh, would I be tagged a hypocrite? Uh, those were honest feelings a year ago that I was struggling with and I was dealing with. And the answer is no and no to all the above. Uh, and I can see that so clearly now. What happened to me on August uh, 21st, 2011 uh, was a pouring of a foundation a foundation of the strongest material ever made uh, was laid for my life. Um, and uh, this foundation allows me to easily begin building a house. And that's a house that I'll never complete, mind you, uh, yet I get to add walls, bricks, mortar, the securest bond, um, as long as I pay attention to the architect. Back in the day, I was too busy being fabulous uh, thinking I could do it all. Um, my plans, though, good were built on uh, shaky ground, a rather porous foundation, inviting ill will, chance, and uh, luck, sometimes good, sometimes bad. That's simply not the case today, and I enjoy following this plan, and my house is off to a great start. On uh, Sunday, August 28, 2011, one week as a newly minted Christian, uh, Joe uh, asked me to help in serving communion. And uh, Joe told me it was very important what I had done in being baptized. I'll never forget that, um, and uh, that he was proud of me, and thought it was the right thing for me to do at Help in Communion that day, and again, I was honored. Um, truthfully, uh, just a mere seven days in, um, I couldn't grasp the enormity of uh, what I had done or committed to. I guess for some it's instant, uh, for others it may take a while. Uh, for me, having nearly a year now to reflect, I see a huge difference uh, in my spirituality, my closeness to God, and my bond with Jesus. And in fact, it didn't take long, uh, it didn't take long at all. Leading up, uh, in preparation for today, I was uh, looking in the mirror, and a thought came to my mind, you know, just what is different in me than a year ago? Um, I still uh, look the same somewhat, I've lost a little weight. Uh, I haven't grown, I haven't shrunk still dress the same, you know, what's changed, and really the, the two places are what's between uh, my ears and my mind, and uh, what's behind my ribcage here in my heart. You see, on August 1st, 1962, I arrived in this world with a clean, brand new slate, and what occurred over the next 17,500 days uh, shaped me uh, until Patrick put me under the water. And, um, what that baptism has done for me is provide me with a clean slate, a newer, more open mind, and a cleansed heart. Uh, friends, it's simple. I now have two birthdays in the month of August. Uh, here's another example of the old Jeff versus the new Jeff. And you know, in business, uh, in fact, maybe even this church has one, uh, there's uh, models of operations sent around organizational charts. We've all seen them 
little bubble here and, and down uh, to the lower rung. And in my past before committing, uh, my organization chart of Jeff Incorporated uh, had me at the center. Uh, and in the flow bubbles, there were family, home, career, fun, God, yeah, I had to have him in there, of course, but finances, sports, etc. That was so wrong and so faulty and a bad way to uh, conduct business. Today's flow chart is very different. Uh, the big boss is at the center, then me, maybe a little, uh, like our logo is uh, kind of uh, coupled there, and then my flow bubbles. You see, last August 21st, I fired me and hired God. Uh, God and Jesus are consulted before I venture. God and Jesus are my home office, uh, my touch base. Uh, now before I do anything, I am grounded. Uh, and I have, as I mentioned, a rock solid foundation. As long as I put uh, God first, everything else becomes first class. Uh, that's uh, what's uh, different uh, than a year ago. But it wasn't always like that. And uh, to see me today and how I feel about myself, I have to go back and examine the past. And I'd like to uh, share uh, my beginnings uh, before the faith walk uh, came about. And again, I can't really figure out why I was fretting over the act of committing last August publicly in a lake with an audience. Uh, today I'm all in though, it's simple and there's no going back. What I realized early after my believer's baptism was uh, I'm a work in progress and will be one until I, I let draw my last breath on this planet. The security blanket that envelops me is my commitment I made to Jesus and Jesus is my true moral compass. You know, my earliest recognition of Jesus uh, was as a child at the First Presbyterian Church in Roanoke, Virginia. I saw pictures in Sunday school. Uh, vacation Bible school was fun. I recall a member of the congregation asking me one day, son, where did you get that red hair? And me as a four or five year old uh, replied, God. Uh, and I remember my mom being very, very proud with that. I can remember it almost as if it was yesterday. My family, uh, my mom, my dad, my sister and I, we went to church for a while, but um, just quit going after a while. I, I couldn't even tell you why that occurred, but it did. We moved from Virginia to a much smaller town in North Carolina in 1976, and my new friends were all members of the Carborough Baptist Church. And I was often asked to attend service with one or more of them, uh, but I'd politely turn them down. One figured I might be asked something biblically I wouldn't have the answer to, uh, and two embarrassed that I'd not been a church goer. Seemed like pretty cool stuff though, and there was the occasional trip to the amusement park on the church bus uh, that I was invited to. So I felt out of place in the long run, though, and I really have no one else to blame. It's just the way it was. In 78, my mom and dad were going through a divorce, and I'd lie in bed at night and talk to God and ask him to put a stop on all this divorce talk going on down the hallway um, to get mom and dad back together again. Uh, a 16-year-old teen has a lot going on without any extra crisis. So my conversations with the Lord were then begging and pleading, you know, uh, quid pro quo. Uh, God, please do this for me and I'll be good, I promise. Um, it doesn't always work out that way and never actually does. In October 1980, uh, and really publicly um, discussed for the first time since the trial, I was involved in a near fatal carjacking in Wilmington, North Carolina. I was a college freshman two months into my fall semester and my life turned around in one night. In 87, Dee Dee and I married, and we began our careers doing the typical things that newlyweds do in future building and planning, except go to church. Uh, now, we were believers. I've always believed in God. Uh, it's not like we were slackers or didn't care. I simply didn't take it serious enough to study, to get in depth, uh, to learn. Uh, and in fact, I was light years away from seeing the light. In 1998, in my mid-30s, uh, I changed careers from what I was doing. Uh, I'm, I'm doing it today, uh, but uh, I changed careers then. And I went into residential real estate with a plan. It just wasn't something I decided to do overnight. I had a mentor in the business, uh, and it didn't work, and I had a jumping off point. Uh, and when that jumping off point came, I had two options, uh, to go back to my previous line of work or find something else. So I summoned the smartest man I could find at that time, uh, the CEO of Jeff Incorporated, <laughs> and uh, chose something else unwisely. Long story short, I was spinning wheels faster and faster and couldn't get to where I wanted to be fast enough. 
it was not a good time to be the architect of my life. Today, in retrospect, I can look back and see exactly where God was moving in all my life from birth to birth. I, and long before I knew of a town called Noblesville, Indiana, much less uh, Faith Community Church. I can look back and almost start to see exactly where changes started to occur long before I committed last summer. You know, on Saturday afternoon in May 2002 near Memorial Day, we had a big backyard uh, in Virginia and I created a baseball diamond in it for Drew. Uh, when it was football season, I put lines down for football, uh, half acre lot. Uh, we had a lot of fun back there. But on this particular Saturday, I was walking in my backyard deep in thought. Um, lost actually in thought and I was down. I had worked so hard to uh, get to a certain point and things just weren't where I wanted them to be. And it was a gorgeous uh, afternoon, much like uh, what I see behind me there. And uh, I walked up to the property line on the back of our fence. Um, and I recall holding on the chain link fence and looking up uh, through uh, some green leafy limbs and uh, just a radiant sun and uh, the white puffy clouds and blue sky. And uh, right out of that blue sky, I heard a voice uh, with uh, a two-word message saying, go back. Now, I was stunned. I'd heard something or someone say, go back. But, you know, what exactly did it mean? I had to come up with a translation, of course. Was it get back in the house? A storm was coming soon. I, you know, uh, I didn't uh, know what to do, but I found myself moving back across the house to the house or back across the yard of the house as fast as I could go, almost in a trot, uh, to tell Dee Dee that, you know what, I'm going to pick up the phone Monday morning and call my old boss uh, and see what he's got in the southeast. I just, got, I just got a feeling it's the right thing to do. And I did make that call, and my old boss informed me that he was just moments away on that Monday morning of offering a position to someone else in Gallatin, Tennessee. But since I had called, uh, he had rekindled interest in me, uh, and just in a few days, uh, plans were made for us to relocate out of Virginia back to Tennessee, and it was, uh, it was a go. We had four great years in Tennessee, six actually. Uh, the last two was uh, Dee Dee's first fight uh, with uh, cancer. Things were easier, thank goodness. And truthfully, uh, we discussed a church more than we ever had before, uh, but inexplicably didn't uh, get serious enough about it to start going regularly. Um, I poured a tremendous amount of work, uh, effort into my work with my second chance, uh, including many Saturdays, and uh, I, I rested on Sundays. Isn't that what you were supposed to do? No, it wasn't. Um, in the summer of 2008, we re relocated to Indiana. As 2009 was drawn to a close, we made a decision finally to find a church in the year 2010 and to start going regularly, to make that commitment. And what better uh, to start with Faith Community Church, which is right across the field from where we live here at Rotobush Farm, or Woods. Um, and we decided to come to the Christmas Eve service of uh, 2009. Like that so much, and then kick off the 2010 with uh, going regularly. Didn't make it to that uh, Christmas Eve service, uh, because on the 23rd, uh, Dee Dee was uh, diagnosed with her recurrence. We did make the following service on Sunday the 27th, and I have not looked back. As tough as it was to begin battling again, you know, progress is being made. Uh, the folks that know us and know us well know that we'd take two steps back then take a step forward. Uh, that back and forth, back and forth was uh, encouraging. Yet in September 2010, uh, the liver, her liver appeared to be compromised and that added a whole new dimension and difficulty in the fight. We all know the story. As soon as we left the doctor's office with uh, concern over her liver that day, and Al, this is where it's so great to see you today. Uh, we drove straight here. Uh, we didn't go and have a pity party at the house or anything like that. And uh, there was plenty of time for that, of course. But we left the doctor's office and came straight to you uh, for prayer. Uh, and that was very, very healing uh, that afternoon. That very night uh, in my house, I'd like to share with you again that I heard another voice. And I've told this story to several of you. It wasn't the same tone or dialect. It was angelic, uh, and the words were crystal clear. She'll be okay. And that was it. Nothing else. And knowing that I was growing in my faith walk, and that I was more in tune spiritually, 
Though uh, rather slow and methodical, um, I mean, uh, glaciers have formed and uh, melted faster than uh, it's taken me to get before you today. Uh, but those words uh, gave me so much comfort uh, that I heard that night. And I read those words as a voice of God saying that she'll be okay. We've got this. Always have and always will. And until the day she went to heaven, those words, she'll be okay, uh, had been the foundation of my coping with her journey to heaven. Folks, I was told she'd be okay, and uh, who am I to argue with the Word of God? Now, fast forward to approximately one year ago, uh, Patrick was speaking of uh, the believer's baptism like he did today. Morse Lake had water. Uh, we were keenly interested in uh, uh, the believer's baptism along with Drew, uh, who made me very, very proud that day uh, that uh, you joined us uh, there in the lake. We had Patrick over one night to talk to us, and we committed. Um, and I have a different mindset now, and I'd like to share with you a few examples before I close. Um, last September, uh, we began attending a finance class uh, over here at the Catholic Church, and uh, some of the teachings in, in the workbook uh, dis uh, dis uh, discuss scripture, um, and chiefly from Proverbs. And now there was a time when the old Jeff, you know, would have probably uh, had an idea, that maybe we ought to withdraw from this thing because this seems religious-based, and who knows, it might be a scheme or something. And man, was that just a poor, poor, poor way of thinking from the old Jeff. Um, we did have to withdraw from the class uh, after about uh, six or seven uh, uh, meetings out of the 13 that you have to attend uh, with Didi's turn for the worse. But um, yet there was a promise that the next time the course was offered uh, that uh, I'd continue uh, with or without her. And I did return to that course this past January and I even studied Proverbs on my Bible app on my smartphone that I cannot go without. That, that is a daily habit that I will not break. Uh, due in part to its handy references in my course workbook. Uh, and the teacher was right. If you study Proverbs deeply enough, uh, you could uh, almost get a degree in personal finance. It's all in there, good common sense stuff. I enjoyed that course uh, and, uh, so much and was so involved in the 13 weeks. Uh, the administrators asked me to come back this fall uh, to help teach the class. Now that to me is uh, pretty amazing uh, and what a ministry opportunity that is. Another moment of significance, uh, one Sunday in November, November of last fall, Patrick and Jeff uh, showed up at our hospital room down at Community North. And I thought it was just a nice gesture uh, for them to drop by uh, to see us. But they had other plans. Uh, and they brought uh, communion to us. I'll never forget that. And uh, neither did Dee Dee. Um, and Joe, you're right. That is the most important thing we do every week. Um, folks, that was Dee Dee's last communion on earth. Uh, that uh, November Sunday. And you do not know how much strength it gives me to know where her next one came from and who she was with. Uh, that is just uh, means so much and just how cool is that. Here's yet another example of uh, how my, my how heart and mind have changed uh, since committing. On the evening of Saturday, December 10th, and Dee Dee drawing her last breaths uh, and surrounded by her family and friends, um, as that night was unfolding, I did not have a sad image or an urge to belt out, uh, you know, please don't uh, take her, uh, this isn't fair, or you know, whatever is portrayed in uh, Hollywood uh, movies. Uh, no, I had another image, another vision that came to mind that night, um, and that there was another room uh, somewhere close by, not in the hospital, but somewhere close by, and that room was full of angels squealing in delight and excited anticipation that she'd be coming through their door in just a matter of moments. Um, God's been there all along for me. And once I saw the light, it gave me peace, it gave me hope, and it galvanized my faith. And really today, the most important uh, example that I can give you is uh, of my commitment and closeness to Jesus and God and how that's uh, provided me the direction and comfort in moving forward. Uh, there are sunny days ahead. Um, and as long as I keep things between the lines, of course. Uh, and clearly I can see the storms of life in the rearview mirror of where I've been. And there will be an occasional shower up ahead, of course, in the days to come. But moving forward with the Prince of Peace is uh, the prescribed way to go. And as I mentioned before, I'm in awfully good stead. It's simple. Uh, there's no going back. I can look back where I thought I was the center of the universe uh, and can clearly see where God was now. 
Uh, God saved me the night I was carjacked 32 years ago, uh, just in the nick of time. Uh, I can easily look back now and connect the dots and see where God was. But not just on those critical days of uh, something uh, tragic. And not on real happy days either. But you know, um, God has a way of showing up on those uh, mundane, insignificant days, uh, like a rainy Monday uh, or a warm, boring summer Thursday afternoon. God is uh, and will always be there uh, with love and uh, full of light. I chose to stay in the dark uh, too long. But you know what? It's nice to be in the light because uh, you can see where you're going. I want to thank you uh, for being here to hear my story today. Thank you. Thanks, Patrick. Excellent. service was from Isaiah and it said this it said forget about what's happened and don't keep going over old history but be alert and be present for I am about to do something brand new I'm bursting out don't you see it see the reality is this we will have the storms in the rearview mirror we will also have those mountaintop experiences But as we make this journey through uh, life with God, those warnings of don't or or forget the past are important to us. Because if we hold on to the storms, and if that's what we continue to go back to and look at and reflect in life, then we forget to think that God has something new in store for us in the future. And we just go forward with with our eyes half open and a dark expectation on the future. Likewise, if we hold on to those mountaintop experiences, then we continue to only relish the times where God has moved at one point back then, and we stop looking for new ways in which God is looking to show off his grace and his mercy and his love in our life. So today we stand together and we celebrate 14 years As a group of people who've come alongside one another is one way that I try to explain it, that we are a bunch of misfits trying to stumble our way towards the cross as we make this journey together. 14 years of of highs and lows, but God's not done working through us. God's not done working through Jeff and the journey and the story that he's on, and God has that same story for you. So thank you today for being a part of Faith Community as we celebrate what God has done in 14 years. And as we look forward with expectancy and with a forgetful mind, as we look forward to new ways and new areas where God is going to take and expand our our ideas and our thoughts and our ministries. And we invite you to come along with us as we explore those and begin those journeys together. Would you stand and join me in a word of prayer? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace and your guidance as you are so patient with us as we look to learn the lessons that you would have us to see. And God, we may at times uh, during the hardships get incredibly frustrated and uh, not have much faith to hold on to and to lean on, but God, you've given us the church, a body of people who can stand alongside of us and can help us out during those trials. And that, God, when we have those moments where you come near to us and we come near to you, God, we have those opportunities that we can take and share about the voices and the way that you've spoken to our hearts and our minds and our lives. And we can talk about new beginnings and new creations and new hopes that are out there before us, even though we may not know exactly what they are. So, God, we pray that as we are here today, that you would put us in a position where our eyes are open, that our hearts are full, and that, God, we continue to look for the Ebenezers in your life where you have shown up and shown us how you were present. Thank you for the 14 years we have, and thank you for the unknown years that lie ahead as we continue to partner in ministry and life with one another. In your name we pray.
Amen. Give it a blessing as it's already been blessed by loving hands and hearts. And then uh, may you enjoy that meal and share in time of, uh, of stories and life together as you share in that meal. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for gathering this group here today. Uh, thank you for the journey that you have brought us to this place. Father, I pray that you'd bless this meal to the strength and nourishment of our bodies. Bless each hand that has played a part in the sharing of this meal. And God, be with the conversations that happen as we join in it together. In your name we pray.